I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, July the 14th, 2015. We begin with reaction to the nuclear agreement reached this morning in Vienna between world powers and Iran, which U.S. President Barack Obama said cuts off, quote, all of Iran's pathways to a nuclear weapon. In his address to the American people today from the White House, the president also expressed that the U.S. shares the concerns of Israel and other allies in the region over Iran's support for terrorism. The very reason, Obama said, this landmark step was taken. Because an Iran armed with a nuclear weapon would be far more destabilizing and far more dangerous to our friends and to the world. The president also vowed continued efforts to strengthen Israel's security. President Obama reportedly called Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to discuss the deal today. Netanyahu earlier called the agreement with Iran a bad mistake of historic proportions, claiming that the cash flow Iran will now get will only strengthen its funding of terror around the world. By not dismantling Iran's nuclear program, in a decade this deal will give an unreformed, unrepentant and far richer terrorist regime the capacity to produce many nuclear bombs, in fact, an entire nuclear arsenal with the means to deliver it. What a stunning historic mistake. And Israel is not bound by this deal with Iran because Iran continues to seek our destruction. We will always defend ourselves. Jewish organizations, meanwhile, expressed concern over the Iran agreement. Executive Director of the American Jewish Committee, David Harris, said the process of now reviewing the deal should be driven by one main question. Will the deal enhance the security of the United States, our allies in the Middle East, and the world? If so, then it should be supported. If not, then it must be opposed adding that however the vote goes, the quote need for vigilance regarding Iran will not for a single moment be diminished. President of the World Jewish Congress, Ronald Lauder, also said they were awaiting more details of the deal with the quote hope that the verification process will allow inspectors to determine Iran's true aims. Lauder said that while he was appreciative of the efforts of the P5 plus one, he remained skeptical, noting that Iran has a history of misleading the world. Lauder said, let's hope that this agreement will be worth the paper it is written on. But if not, he said, the international community must be ready to reinstate sanctions immediately. Leadership of the reform movement representing the Central Conference for American Rabbis, the Religious Action Center for Reform Judaism and the Union for Reform Judaism said they remain committed to the belief that the U.S. must do everything possible to prevent a nuclear-armed Iran and protect the security of Israel in particular, saying that they will continue to consult with experts on the deal before sharing their view on its viability. B'nai B'rith International said the deal has not erased their deep concern about Iran's true intentions and that Congress needs to ask some tough questions about the deal and that if it finds it to be unsatisfactory on crucial issues, Congress should reject it. The Anti-Defamation League expressed their concern as well, saying the deal appears to, quote, fall far short of assuring that Iran will not become a nuclear weapon state. ADL National Chair Barry Curtis Lusher and National Director Abe Foxman said the agreement does not prevent the nuclear threat from Iran for the long term and that there was still serious questions remaining about Iran abiding by the deal. Also saying that sanctions relief will finance Iran's continuous global campaign of terror against Israel and other U.S. allies. The ADL leaders, though, urged an open and respectful consideration of the agreement. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is urging Palestinians in Gaza with any information about the two Israelis missing there to come forward and also called for their safe return. UN spokesman Stefan Dejarek said yesterday that Ban, quote, underscores the responsibility of all parties to protect and respect the rights of civilians. As we reported to you last week, the two Israeli civilians, Abraham Mengistu from Ashkelon, and an unidentified Bedouin Israeli separately entered Gaza on their own, and Israel believes they are now being held by terror group Hamas. 
Jewish organizations are mourning the passing of German parliament member Philipp Misfelder, who was a strong advocate for German-Israeli relations. Misfelder died suddenly yesterday of what is believed to have been a pulmonary embolism. He was 35 years old. Director of the American Jewish Committee's Berlin branch, Deidre Berger, called Misfelder a dear friend of the U.S., of Israel, and of the Jewish people. And looking at our programming for tonight, Tuesday, July the 14th, Mark Golub will look at reaction to the Iran deal from Israel with former Deputy Foreign Minister Dani Ayalon, and from here in the U.S. with Vice President and Washington Director of the Jewish Council for Public Affairs, Jared Feldman, tonight on In the News, which is coming up right after this newscast. Later tonight at 7.30, European Affairs correspondent for the Jerusalem Post, Benjamin Weinthal, talks about the future of European Jewry in a JBS exclusive from ISGAP. Then at 8, President of the Shalom Hartman Institute of North America, Yehuda Kurtzer, asks the question, who speaks for the Jews? That's from a study day at Park Avenue Synagogue. At 9 o'clock, Mark Golub sits down with President of J Street, Jeremy Ben-Ami on the Chaim, and at 10, a replay of Sunday's new JBS series, Live at 5, from the Voice of Israel in Jerusalem. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, July the 14th, 2015. I'm Tisha Bader.